All right, these, these uh, looks like people are still trickling in, but I can go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Brad Janes. Uh, I've been with really Wolfram about six years. I work in the education software so, technology. So, uh, this so is my talk, the uh, random problem generation for the Wolfram problem generator. But I can, we can talk more, I can tell you. Oops. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about, uh, kind of the basic idea, let me make that a bit bigger. Is that better? Okay, so the basic idea of problem generators, kind of what some other people are doing, uh, our answer, what we're working on, and what we'll be doing in the future. And hopefully we'll have some Q&A time at the end. Um, so the basic idea, why make a problem generator? Um, what is a problem generator? It, it's a, a tool that generates random problems. Uh, hopefully they're random, they're usually math, although there's some science, uh, physics, and things like that happening out there. Um, it should have some form of input or interactivity, and it should check if the user's answer is correct. There we go. Um, to me, there's kind of two markets for uh, such a, a tool. Um, the first one is educators. Uh, so more and more educators are moving to online assignments. Um, if you are under age 30, you probably use search, uh, certain things. Um, textbooks, homework sheets, these things are all finite and their numbers of problems. Um, automatic grading is a huge plus. Uh, and then uh, can prevent cheating. Um, you know, people could be looking off the other, uh, you know, off their neighbor's sheet if they, uh, if they have different problems. So it's just a silly little gif I found. All right, um, and then towards students, uh, many subjects, especially math, benefit from repetition of problems. Um, problem generators can have as many problems as you need. Uh, it de decreases the need to carry around textbooks and um, you get immediate feedback on whether you're right or wrong. So uh, the traditional thing of turning in your quiz and waiting a week and forgetting what you did before you get any feedback off, um, that kind of goes away with something like this. Uh, I'm not going to get too into some issues that that we've tried to target with ours, but um, so some of these problem generators, they might not be truly random. Um, answer checking is a huge issue. Uh, this example here, it shows uh, enter your response as a real number rounded to two decimal places. Uh, their answer, 15.83. The expected answer was 15.826, which is not to two decimal places. So. Um, there's things like that all, the, all over the place. Uh, plus the, the pedag pedagogical ideas of like what is a correct rounding rule, um, what's the most simplified form of an expression, things like that. Um, and then if you're not using like a, a free response type uh, input field, then should you use true or false? Should you use multiple choice? These have their own issues. Um, and then there's a the idea of, of getting feedback on your answer, uh, this particular one, you know, it says the correct answer does not depend on the variable n. There's no variable n in their answer that they put in here. There's like a, a ln, like natural log, but who knows what happened there. Um, overall, students tend to not like these systems very much. Okay, so our problem generator, the, the things that we've tried to fix, um, it's true random problem generation. We use random, we use uh, various statistics functions that are in Mathematica um, for all of our problem type. Um, answer checking, we, we use the parser uh, from Wolfram Alpha uh, to parse the user's input, and then we have uh, kind of functions on top of that to, uh, to kind of tailor the user's input uh, towards the particular problem type. So whether, whether it's a, a vector, we're, we're looking specifically for various ways you could input a vector. Um, and I'll show some of that off in a minute. Um, we provide feedback to users. Um, so we immediately check their answer. Uh, we have the input interpretation where we kind of show what we think that you typed in. Um, we have hints that we give uh, upon a wrong answer. Um, and finally, we, we make use of Wolfram Alpha's step-by-step -step solutions. Um, and we also track your history per session. So you can kind of go back and look at your, the problems that you've already done. Um, we also provide multiple choice 
as an option for all of our problems uh, in the form of like problem sheets, so like a quiz. Um, and we, we put a lot of effort into making uh, the, the wrong answers for multiple choice, which we label as distractors. Um, we, we put a lot of effort into making those smart. So those are also randomly generated, but kind of programmatically generated. Um, and kind of in, in summary, like people seem to like this. Uh, the most common type of feedback we get is uh, people asking for new content. So they, it seems like people just want more. Um, so I'm going to show off a few things. Uh, so here's the home page. Uh, you can kind of search by topic and kind of dive down into individual topics, sometimes down to the method. Like if you look at calculus, like if you just want to practice power rule derivatives, like you can do that. Um, we also have summary sections for like, uh, you know, pick a random problem from one of these above. Uh, so if you want to, you know, study for your derivatives test or whatever. Um, you can also browse by the Common Core standards. These are the, the US Common Core. Um, so you kind of look at what, it's kind of hard to read, but um, you kind of check out the, the individual standards and you know, for this third grade one, you can see like we have some integer arithmetic stuff. Um, so for a particular problem, um, like I said, with the, the power of Wolfram Alpha's parser, you can type in the answer however you want, and I'm going to do some live math for you guys, so don't judge. And I think that's right. Cool. Um, so there I didn't use parentheses or anything. You can use curly brackets, parens, whatever. And if you don't know how to type something in, we have these nice palettes that you can kind of check this out. And you know that's eight. So. Um, <clears throat> If I get something wrong, uh, it'll, it'll pop up a, a message. So here's that inter input interpretation where it shows what, you, uh, what we think that you typed in. Uh, so for 12, it's not very interesting, but uh, something like that, you might see uh, how we interpreted it. Like maybe that's a bit ambiguous. Maybe you meant you know, to the power of 2x so you can change your input based on that. Um, you can kind of see your previous attempts here. And then uh, we give you three attempts. And if you don't get it on the third attempt, it'll pop up the step-by-step -step solution, uh, again, that we stole from Alpha. Um, another cool thing is, let me. That's a perfect one to do that with. OK. Um, so our, like we don't want people to cheat, but if you typed in something like this, instead of getting like a generic hint, you would get, you know, since this is equivalent to the right answer, just not simplified, uh, it just asks you to simplify the answer. OK. Um, and, and the link to there, if you guys check out the, the website after, um, you can uh, get a copy of this notebook and you can check things out on the links there. Um, so some things we're doing in the future, the first one is more content. Um, geometry, trigonometry, physics, these are all in the works. I've got some kind of sample things to show off for that. Uh, so pretty pictures with trig and geometry. Um, here's like some systems of equations that we're we're, we're kind of in the final stages of and about to release. Um, some physics stuff that we're, we're working on. We have these nice like known quantities tables. Um, we're kind of in early talks with chemistry and physics, kind of generating, uh, and, and, and generating word problems is also another uh, a thing that we're, we're really interested in doing. Um, like how do you generate a random phrase? Right now we kind of use templated things, but um, yeah, that's a, that's a cool problem uh, that we're looking to solve. Um, in addition to that, the site's going to have some visual and interactivity improvements pretty soon. Uh, further down the line, we're, we're wanting to get some like teacher administrative tools um, so we can have better user history tracking. Like I'd like you to be able to uh, see every single problem that you've ever done. Um, you know, maybe sending your answers to a third party so we can kind of have online tests for people. Um, 
And I love the idea of like certifications or gaming or leveling up, you know, systems like that that are built in. I know Khan Academy does a lot of really cool stuff like that. Um, uh, better hint generation, right now it's uh, partially pulled from the, the step by step. Um, but I, we, we've kind of looked into ways to use machine learning to uh, uh, maybe tell where the user went wrong. Um, the previous few talks were really cool about uh, all the machine learning stuff that's going on in uh, version 11. So I'm hoping to dig into some of that. Um, and then same with, with uh, problem selection. So uh, kind of the dream is to present a user with a problem. And if they do really well on it and they do it really fast, then we'll give them a harder problem. And then if they're having trouble with it, we'll maybe give them a, a, the same level or, or an easier problem. Um, yeah, integration with uh, Wolfram Alpha, better integration with that, and maybe other Wolfram products. Um, oh, I didn't show off the problem sheets. Let's see. This is a pro feature, but if you are logged in, it should be fine, which I am. Yeah, so this would be something maybe you, you would print out for a, a test or, or something like that. Um, so we have this page, or we have the, uh, you can download as a PDF. Um, so the, the idea of like an interactive problem sheet like that came up. So we kind of threw something together. Uh, this is just kind of bare bones, like, like early. Uh, let's refresh that. Um, kind of like a proof of concept that we did. Uh, but it's kind of cool. Uh, we actually, uh, since the code base for alpha is old at this point, um, we built out a U, uh, or an API to kind of build this, uh, this problem set. Um, again, it's, it's not super neat, but uh, the idea of it was cool. Um, and then we actually took that API, and Stephen showed this for like a second yesterday, but uh, this is a, a way to kind of generate problems for uh, you know, an, an app developer or, or even a teacher, um, then kind of get like a list of problems here. That's super small, but I guess take my word for it. <laughs> um, and this makes use of uh, the permissions key. So this is just a cloud object um, that was built with the API. And the, the particular key for this is uh, that I, I use was WTC16. So if, if you guys, Again, the link's in the notebook, but if you guys go to this page, you should be able to, to check this out and play around with it. Um, there's various like export formats, and uh, the, the simple version just asks the question, or just lists the question, but um, the, the, the full version will give you the question, the answer, the, the different distractors, which I guess for a, is this prime or not, there aren't very many other distractors. Uh, where's a cooler one? So, so what, a way to zoom in, I don't know. There we go. So yeah, here you can see there's like a, a, an ID, question, answer, the various distractors that uh, we generate for that problem. Um, so yeah, uh, there's the link there. Uh, I guess in summary, there's like a huge potential for growth. Um, we're a pretty small team, um, hoping to grow. Uh, right now, I'm the only full-time developer working on this project. Um, that's typically been how it's been since the beginning. There's been one person working on it, but uh, there's other people kind of you know making their own. Uh, like like adding a new problem type is easier than you would think it would be. So. Um, the, the kind of short-term goal is everything that Wolfram Alpha has step-by-step -step for, we want to have problem generation for. So um, we do collect user feedback. So if you, not on this page, but uh, on either the homepage or any of the problem pages, you open this thing, fill that out. Our feedback team's awesome. They'd be able to get those messages to us. Um, so yeah, please try it out. And 
I think I've got some time. So if you guys have any questions or comments.